recording has started so 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 um, I wanted to open the repositories Orchard one Orchard one, Orchard one, dev branch fixed a layout rest condition, some JavaScript issue that could fail on the layout editor. Um, from 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 Paul Customs. Um, provide source URL for OMBED part as media URL. So if you are um, getting a media from an OMBED stream, then one of the properties of the fields will be also updated, which is the public URL property. It was not previously, but it might be useful. This is an information that is that might be available, so it's it's uh, populated now. And on the one next branch, use create route values for creation routes. Um, I don't remember what it was fixing. Let me see if there is a message here. I think it's related to the admin. Sure, to generate the URL. Okay. So, click link for the lists to create an item in the list. Using the metadata. Okay. That's it for Orchard 1. Orchard call. People. Sebastian, the new active contributor. Um, so, 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 what do we have here? Uh, Jasmine working on something which is called 3912. Did we merge that? I think we merged that. I don't remember, but I'm, I think yes, yes. It's part of admin script cache was thing, I think. Boom. So, yes, it was merged. Um, async branch from Theory, adding more async stuff where it can be added. So what did we merge on the dev branch? Everything else is older. So this is the first one. Add permissions to localization and reverse proxy settings navigation. So more permissions for the things that can be um, behind the permission. Proxy, reverse proxy settings and localization. Then Dean bringing back media size limit attribute. Yeah, so at some point to limit the media size, I had made an attribute, but it didn't work. I don't remember what reason. So I made something else to prevent that. Yeah, some custom logic, and this was a code to look at the at the file size and now Dean made it back to an attribute because apparently it works. I don't remember what was blocking it. We talked about it during a meeting but yeah it's back to an attribute. But that would be interesting to know why it was not an attribute because I made an attribute. 
and then I removed it because there were some issues. Dum, 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 dum. Start up filter issue. Okay. Oh, that. Oh, I see. Maybe this uh, was kicking it too early and removing some data. Oh, I, see. I remember. I remember. So this needs a comment because otherwise we'll look at the 1000 and we'll be like, why? Why do we need a value and why 1000? Just so that the filter attribute for the media limit reacts before this filter. Otherwise, it will read, yes, I see. Because on the first colon, a specific read method on the body, um, the stream will be uploaded. And this attribute slash filter will do that. But this one too. So this will be too late when we check in this attribute. It will be already done by this filter. OK, now I remember. Um, so we need a comment there to remember next time I ask the question. GraphQL makes schema generation thread safe uh, because, because multiple concurrent requests on GraphQL could generate the schema at the same time. So now it's thread safe and yep, so it should not impact anyone. Uh, reloads resource setting on update from Dean again so that when you change the uh, site settings, which one in particular? CDN, for instance, <laughs> then it will be reloaded. Uh, bootstrap upper version and CDN integrity fixes. Lots of versions have been updated. Uh, screen versions and also resource package versions and also the um, CDN integrity hashes have been redefined. Good job. And I was thinking when I saw all these changes about the set happen version. True. Um, I'm, I would think that if we have a version, set version, Maybe a default will be to append it also to the URL, and a non-default will be to say don't append it to URL with a, with an extra parameter on the set version, because it doesn't make sense to call set append version if there is no set version. From what I saw in the code, when I saw you changing that calls and sometimes also setting the version, so which makes me think. It could be true if we set the version, and if we set the version, we could say don't generate it if it's false, and then put it false uh, as an argument here, which means we never had to call set up and version if we do set version, but just false when we don't want it to be append to the appended to the URL. Does it make sense? Antoine is back! Yeah! Um, it makes sense the answer being you can talk in if you have a microphone that will be easier unless you are shamed by your yeah, English accent that'd be the Kiwi exit yeah you should be ashamed about your English accent I didn't understand anything what did you say uh, yeah I think Jasmine's already made a uh, um, commit to to have a default site setting for the append version, okay. uh, which would control that. The, the set version doesn't actually append anything to the URL. But it's yeah, but use yeah, but my part. yeah, my suggestion was to make it by default. Then, if we have a version, then have the well. If we have a version, let's append it by default. Because I see that everywhere it's set up and version true. 
right? Just one or two cases were false. Um, yeah, it is, but uh, I think um, Jasmine has already made a commit to change that on okay. the other one. The other one. There is another one. Okay, Pia. There is. That is um, maybe just above that. The um, oh, admin scripts. let's see. Thank you. So settings open version. Oh no no you I dude and I merged the PR and I think there is a new setting. Yes I remember that. Thank you Jasmine. Why didn't you say anything? Or maybe you didn't understand my question? No, it's just because that we removed the, the set upon version. Yeah, There's no okay. way here. And the Good. set version there is is not really uh, used at all at all for appending like Dean says. But but it could be an option, I mean. Yeah, it could be a yeah the full but that's that's okay in this case I'm fine with that that's at least a good improvement. Uh, so now you just say set up inversion to false. Um, that's a, in terms of API naming, it's weird to have a boolean as a set because there is a default for if it's a string you define values or an integer or whatever okay yeah, there are many values here there are only two values for a boolean and the default being false so the only action you will be able to do on that will be to just say uh, not set up inversion to boolean but like remove version or don't happen version and you don't have to say false that's just something some API and expecting that you will not call oh but no i said set up inversion but do actually happen the version so and in this case the, the boolean yeah just that's okay but just set version yeah set up version okay so false for so why do you say false in this case What's the reason we will say false? Uh, I think for those ones, they're only ever supplied by a CDN. Yeah. Um, so if you set a pen version false, then it, it just stops the, the file version provider doing a lookup on a um, external URL. Okay. Even if, even if the site setting is turned on. So I would have said that we only want to open the version if the URL doesn't already contain the version. In this case, so if I take the URL of the CDN, I have the version, but the local one exactly, there is a version. There is no version, so we need to add it. And if I take this one, we don't have local one. So interesting. So we'll, we'll never try to append a version on that, or, or can never do that. That's, so this, the, the append version will then only be used for the local URLs and not the CDN URLs? Correct. Isn't it yep. so? Yeah. OK, so you assume that the CDN URL will always have the version inside? Well, we don't necessarily assume that, but that was just the pattern from the file version provider to never try to do absolute URLs. Okay, well. The only reason why we would want to cache bus uh, URL that comes from a CDN is because we will change. No, the I, URL, I agree. But... I agree that. That's why I'm saying if it's a CDN, we expect that the URL is unique per version. Yeah. yeah. So we don't need to open the version, but. And we also put an integrity hash on it, so it won't load anyway. Oh, it's, uh, so then there is only the CDN here. And you say set up and version false. But even if I say true, it's only the CDN, so it won't change anything, right? I just, um, stops the um, file version provider having to know up. So it's because of the way the file version provider is implemented? Um, 
Yeah, there's a there's a, a couple of checks in there that check for an absolute URL, and if it finds an absolute URL, then it can um, no op out. But if you set it here, then it doesn't need to even check because it knows not to. Yeah, so I, I would have expected that if there is only a CDN, then we don't need to set false because it should not. Because if there is here, yeah, it's by default it's true, and we have a CDN and we have a local URL. I would expect that from the CDN, it's not even checking whatever happened version. It will never happen the version because it's a CDN, or because not it's a CDN, but because it's an absolute URL. So we are like, no, we don't need to add the, the version because it's, it's an absolute URL. Or maybe we want to be able, even if it's an absolute URL, but the fact that it's a CDN, we say no. So that, that, okay. I'm just trying to understand why we have to call set happen version and if it's a good reason. In this case, I, w I will think that we should never have to call set happen version because even in this case, it could be appended, but because it's a CDN only, then we won't, we'll never append it. But in this case, we have both yeah. the CDN and the local one and it should happen it for the local one, but not the CDN one, even if it's true by default. We could change something in the um, the resource manager, probably the require settings to do that. Actually, that would work. And if we need to have a flag at the set URL level, like to say set URL and append version, and set CN and say don't append the version, that would work. And also something we. I think people did that by the past. Instead of saying set append version, they will just have the URL with the version here, like a query string with the version. Okay. Yeah, I have to check how it's done later. So now there is a setting on the site settings. so that you can automatically do it from a system. Yes. Also that, with, um, if you found it somewhere, we don't do it anymore apparently. This is extracted from the localization on the left and the right to left will automatically put it on the right. So. Last time Shamko checked, we removed those dashes outside of the translation string, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. Maybe there's some missing there because I just copied. Yeah, I guess you copied, so yeah, we forgot some of them. Just for next time, when you find one, you will fix the one you found instead of copying it. Um, unpublished content should set modified the time so that when we unpublish a content item then the modification modified UTC is changed. iShell configuration documentation to explain uh, how to use the iShell configuration so the configuration settings pertinent where to get them from and uh, how to set them with all the conventions from the environment variables from the config files global config files, tenant-based config files, and everything. Uh, so brain dump from Jean Thierry by Dean. Um, change label to none, based on the feedback from last week. A plural extension should work with null string localizer. There is a unit test that shows the issue. I think there is a unit test. This one. Yeah, I, I think didn't find the issue. Plural extension should work with null string localizer. When there is no when the localization module is not enabled, we are using the null string localizer. In this case, the pluralization was not working correctly. So now it's fixed. Show connection string hint for all data providers so that when you're on the setup screen and you select different um, database providers, then the example string on the hint will match the 
the database you selected. Um, integrity, Shantiri made a PR about something, we'll see on Thursday. And, and the last one, which is merge, make register the Facebook script. So yeah, as suggested, we just need to do, to use the resource manager, register resource with a named resource, instead of trying to inject tags directly, because this might not work based on the tenant and things. So we need, it's simpler and it's better. Good. Um, question on the changes? Um, no question. So I have topics and we have demo. So Dean said he will show us the CDN work is done. Um, Jasmine didn't say he will do any demo. Antoine didn't say he will do any demo. Nobody else said they will do any demo. Uh, but you can just let us know. Uh, add some topics. Um, so Dean will talk about the CDN and we'll talk with him. I have one comment for Antoine. I tried, so I had some feedback from some colleagues who tried GraphQL in the TriArchard project and it doesn't work. Um, and I wondered what version we were using on TriArchard project. Maybe it's an old one, but graph, if you enable GraphQL and try to go to GraphQL, there is a, there is a bug, so we need to, to update that. Um, and that should be taught once we see about the CDN topic. Dean, do you want to share your screen? Yeah. Okay. Do you want also, you, if you want to open the issue you file with all the things, the goals for the CDN work uh, to refresh everyone's mind and mine? But mostly for everyone else than me, than me, okay, because I remember everything we said. That was a while ago, let me see if I can find it. I even tried to find something, and because I thought I had written something about it. But maybe we just talked about it during a meeting. More specifically. Yeah, I was mean, so from, from wanting to have um, as a blob storage working with the image sharp resizing. Um, which obviously doesn't work at the moment because we just serve a local, uh, serve the um, blob storage URL directly. So we've kind of talked about a few different options there. Um, and I worked on the cache busting first because I kind so of find that important for a CDN provider. I, I need to explain something first <laughs> because I just, it just came back to my mind. So there are two concerns here. There is the Azure Blob Storage Provider support and there is the CDN support. And these are actually two different uh, concerns. And, and I'm also saying that because I want to see if you agree with, with it or, or not. So at, in Orchard 1, uh, we used, we were able to use Azure Blob Storage and we used it as a CDN, meaning when we will render the media from Azure Blob Storage, we will render the URL from the Azure Blob Storage. So the client will directly download the media from Azure Blob Storage, so, okay? So the, the, the Orchard server will not serve the file, the Azure CDN will serve the file. Um, in Orchard Core, we are using Image Sharp as the first, well, the first middleware that serves the, the media. And and in the case of uh, if I take the code right now, as of today or maybe a month ago, um, when we render a file from Azure Blob Storage, we still render the Azure Blob Storage URL. And in this case, um, the media resizing doesn't work. Correct. Is it correct? Okay. So when we talked about 
that like a year ago, I assume during a meeting, uh, we said, I said, and everyone agreed with me, um, based on some feedback from the image shop developers, they said, you're doing it wrong. You should always serve all your media from your server, even if it's coming from Azure Blob Storage. This way, the um, image shop filter will be able to convert the images and the sizes and all the things also. The idea being then that when we serve a media, we load from the server the Azure Blob Storage, the Azure Blob. We load it, we transform it, we cache it locally, and we serve it. And the next time we ask for the same media, we have it in the cache, so we serve the cache. Okay, so we so the Azure Blob Storage in this case is not used as a CDN because it shouldn't be used as a CDN. It's used just as some storage and we have to load it whenever we need to load it. So that's why we need a good caching uh, solution. And then we still have the issue of the CDN. How do we do a CDN then? Because we can't use Azure Blob Storage as a CDN or as a solution for a CDN. So the solution is to just be able to use a CDN for any media that we render, either they are from the local uh, disk or from Azure Blob Storage, they will be always served by the Orchard Core server. But instead of, so, but what we do is that when we generate the URL to the generated um, media, meaning resized media, for instance, or not resized media, when we generate the URL, we don't generate our own local URL to access our local cache of the file or the resized file, but we generate the URL to a CDN endpoint, any CDN, Cloudflare, Azure, Verizon, whatever CDN you want to use, that itself is configured to go ask our server for the media. So we generate a URL to the CDN and our only job for a CDN support is to generate a CDN URL. And then it can also be an Azure CDN URL, not an Azure Blob storage URL, but an Azure CDN URL. Because there is a service on Azure that you can enable that's called the Azure CDN. And you tell it, oh, I want a URL, I want a new CDN, and you can call it mycdn.mydomain.com and configure it to go find the assets under your site slash media or whatever URL it is, so that when it needs to load the content and store it on the CDN, it will ask our server to do so. And it might be that the media comes from Azure Blob Storage, then is transformed and stored in a cache locally on our server, requested by the CDN and then served by the CDN. Okay, that's the idea. And then with this CDN solution, we could work with any storage provider. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to say. And do you agree with what I said? Yeah, that's exactly what we've been talking about, I think. Awesome. Uh, I and think I even have, somewhere I have a Azure CDN and, hanging around. And you have already done also a PR that we merged recently, which is the CDN for the resource manager. Um, right, the CDN support for the resource manager. And uh, the, in the same way, today we 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 render we we serve all the resource scripts like jQuery, our local um, CSS and script files and things like this. So we we serve a bunch of static assets that we might want to provide from a CDN, even if they are static assets to our application. And to do that, you made a PR so we could configure a CDN endpoint that instead of generating the resource from the local server, you will generate a resource using this configured CDN endpoint for the resources, right? And you made it and it's merged and it works. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yes, yeah, works well. But, but we have never seen it working. Well, very useful for um, if you're developing your own themes that your, your static assets are being served there. Um, have I shown it working? I don't think I have, no. Nope. Um, if you may, if you have something working. We can, well, we can fake it, I suppose. Oh, generate um, the fake, the URL, but it won't work, something like that. 
Or you can just generate a, a, a URL to the local host and see that it actually pulls from Interesting. there. Interesting. Well. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you, if you if you were to take this URL here and say we're looking at the admin CSS where it's coming from, oh, it's going to it's going to tell us that it's coming from the local host anyway. But we no, I don't want to to interrupt your, your demo. I just wanted to see if it was doable. But otherwise, next next time we'll demo it maybe. And um, we could use the, I don't, I never remember the the .co.uk service like 127.0.0.1.co.uk that you can fake localhost. And so that's a way to something like that now. But sure, yep. Yeah, don't worry. That's okay. But yeah, this is the setting I see here. Use CDN. No, the, which one is for the resources? I see CDN base URL and use CDN. So use CDN will give you the external CDN for Bootstrap, like StatPath, for example, or any of the, the other registered CDNs in the resource manager. Okay. Um, whereas a CDN base URL will give you a base URL for your own local scripts. Um, you know, the admin or, or anything that's in your thing. I see. So I think we should have a section called CDN and have all the settings for CDNs inside this section, uh, even if it's on this page, because here I was confused. I, and I know exactly how it works, but I, I was confused, which means if you don't know exactly how it works, you will also be confused. Yeah, we need, we need a CDN section and then show the, um, all the CDN settings, the three different URLs we can, or the checkbox for the resource CDN, and then the URLs for the resource, local resources and uh, media resources. That makes sense. Um, so in terms of CDNs and blob storage with um, image sharp, um, the CDN side of it is, is quite a, is a reasonably simple thing to, to achieve. Um, what I've got here is a couple of the standard agency themes. Um, this one here is configured to use Azure Blob Storage, um, but with resizing, so the media is stored on the blob storage provider um, and then brought down to image sharp and can you, served by can, can you increase the size software. of the font? Uh, uh, you should have a big resolution. Yeah, sorry. Can I zoom? No, it doesn't. It just zooms the site. Oh, it's better? Nice. Yeah, it's better. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, if you're using the standard blob provider, you're going to have your images are going to start coming through looking like this because they haven't been resized. Um, but if we enable support for resizing, um, then you'll get these served from blob storage. Um, I can show you the place in this blob storage account here. And they'll be caught by image sharp on the way through because the URL, if you look at the URL for them. How did you make the sizes not work? I, on, the, on this one? Sorry, this one. Because these images, they are part, are they part of the, yeah, they are part of the media, I see. But, okay. They are part of the media. Is it the old code before your PR? Um, so what I've done at the moment, because th this is not PR ready, it's just um, an exploration, mm -hmm. is I've added a, wait, let me see it. Um, a setting here in the app settings yes. for whether or not you support resizing. Oh, that's weird. Um, 
not intended to con to carry on, but um, so I've got uh, basically I've got two Bob providers, one which will still give the is a blob URL and the other one which will give the local URL. Just to demo. Okay. Um, so if you look at the URL on this one, this is a blob. This is a blob. Okay. Uh, and I know because I made my screen so small, so big. <laughs> Yeah, so this is this is a, a direct blob URL, which we're used to seeing from Orchard One. Yes. Okay. Which is not good. No. But if we go back here, we can see somewhere in here. Okay, local URL. So we have a local URL. Um, the same local URL you would you would expect. It's it's got the the base passes. The, the tenant and in the media folder. But it's actually stored still in the Azure Blob storage. It's just that when the request comes to Orchard with the local URL, it will download from the Blob storage if it hasn't done it yet. Correct. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I can clear the cache on... So merge it. That site, for example. Yes, so I see it somewhere. How do you find it? Oh, you want to? Okay, what will happen? Oh, it will regenerate all the images, so you can find. Yeah, it doesn't tell us where they are coming from, but we trust you that they are coming from the blob storage. Well, you can see them. I the door open because I was watching how many head requests it makes. Because um, it's quite heavy. So you can see it makes quite a lot of head requests to see if the, the blob exists, and then you see the actual blob starting to arrive. I think we missed that part because my screen got disconnected and I am recording, but I can see your fiddler now. So I'll, I'll do that again just to give a because it's it's interesting to see how much slower it is on the first. Yeah, it makes sense uh, because it has to. And in Fiddler, we will see also the calls to Azure Blob Storage. Yeah, let me see if they're like they're very small. Let me see if I can get them side by side. So if I refresh this now, you can see the, the kind of time that it takes to build that case the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and what you're seeing in Fiddler here is, like, first there's a request to see if the file exists, um, and then there's the actual file coming down. Then, then there are two levels of caching that happen on the second request. First, the client cache is active because when we generate these images, we had we had a, a public cache uh, tag, so that the client won't reload the same image again, won't send the request again, and then if we send, even if we send the request, it's cached locally in the server, so we won't ask Azure again. We will just load the file locally. Correct. Um, default of 30 days, I think, on the client cache. Mm -hmm. and, and that is configurable, um, so that's good. Yeah, but it's good. Plus, we can also add um, version support on it so that it will um, okay. append a version hash, mm -hmm. um, which will mean that a client that comes to the site again where the image has changed. Um, even if they're within that 30 day cache period, yeah. we'll still get in. Cache busting, good. The V equals hash, that's the V. And and you added that recently, right? Or... Yeah, recently. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, Jasmine is complaining uh, about the speed <laughs> on Azure when you host it on Azure because it's slower and then it's slower. But that's okay. Yeah, so it's slower on the first time. Yeah. Um, but that's the price of using blob storage. That uh, makes sense. Um, so what else do we also have with this? Um, so, so this so is the last this is the fact that now um, Azure Blob Storage is read from OC and OC is serving the image. Okay, good. And the next step is to be able to render that URL, but using a CDN URL. Yeah, so we can do that as well. I think I already, I already am um, because I'm just pretending it's the local host. Ooh. Oh yeah, I saw that. The CDN setting that you had in the settings was localhost for 4300. Yeah, so that works, but we don't see that. So if, so if you put, for instance, um, is there a way to, to cheat that? Like HTTP, no. So what, what do you pass in the setting? Do you, should it be protocol less? Or should it set the protocol? Or, should, um, or can we set both? Like, can we set whatever we want, like slash slash localhost colon 44300, so that it will follow whatever protocol is requested from the client? Or if we want to force HTTPS, we can say HTTPS slash slash. You see what I mean? Yes. Yeah, we can. Yeah, that's good. This way. And that's, that's a choice you make on your, your CDN provider as to yeah, okay. whether you support yeah. either or. Yeah, that's good. So we, here we, we could tell people always use HTTPS, but if they want to use protocol less or HTTP, they can. Interesting. Um, so, so that works for image sharp, which is good. Um, where that doesn't necessarily work straight away is with files that image sharp won't serve. Um, for example, image sharp only handles PNGs and JPEGs, I think, at the moment. Uh, so for a PDF, um, you need to serve it another way. Um, oh, so, so I have so, this one. Yeah. So image shop won't cache something that it cannot understand. No, it's a, it's a little bit of a thing because um, it, it just adds to the the complication of it, I suppose. But I see, and and right now we rely on the cache from image shop to cache the Azure Blob Storage. So if you ask for a PDF, it won't be cached at all. No. So I have a little piece of middleware which will serve this one. It's very experimental. Um, but you'll get this, this PDF will come down. It is in blog storage. Um, but it is a separate piece of middleware with no cache at the moment. So it doesn't even work with image shop? I mean, like, not at all? Shouldn't it just uh, forward the, the image? Or the file? No, it, it doesn't. Um, if you look at the image sharp code, um, in order to be cached, it actually needs to load. So we can't kind of hijack that process. Um, okay. So would it make sense to have a caching middleware? that works in front of the media even if there is no image shop or like caching middleware image shop and then the media storage and not rely on the image shops caching storage to to do that and we could even take the image shop cache implementation to implement this middleware um yeah so I think if I show you very briefly the um, very, very early work on this. That's why I saw in your PR the async lock, because you needed also that. Because I need also that. That lock, um, async so, key lock. Yeah, because yeah, you worked on that with them and it's, I think they have kept your implementation, just made some marginal changes to it. 
because um, you did a, did a read write lock, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Um, so this is this could quite easily use the same cache as as image sharp. Okay. Uh, and when you say cache, is, you mean the same folder and the same implementation? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can just extract it from image sharp. Not not even configure a cache in image sharp, as long as we can put it outside. Because if image sharp cannot handle that, then we still need something to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe our own implementation that is not oh. that, that has or should it be part of the Azure blob storage? No, this is the same issue because if I have a local PDF, that's fine. If I have a local PDF, so it's really just for blob storage that we want to cache the blobs. Yeah, so it's just for blob storage. And um, I know there's a tenant static file provider um, which maybe gets a blob storage plugin at some point as well. Um, so it's I think it's probably got some reuse somewhere, but really it's it's important for media and for the PDF. Um, yeah, makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it might be, it might be that we want in the media module to have this middleware even before the image shop in the and not rely on the image shop configuration for caching. So we just say image shop, whatever, don't cache, return the resized thing and we cache it for you. Uh, I have to check. There's probably some, yeah, there's probably some advantages to that because um, what I see with image shop is every request we make, um, so these images are cached they're um, in the local cache of the server and they're also cached on the browser. Mm -hmm. But if I clear the cache here on the browser, um, I've still got 20 odd requests to blob storage to check the file existence just because of the way image sharp handles I see. that. Yeah, I see. So this, there is some good opportunities to kind of Extra. cache that a heavier. Yeah. I will be okay with that if you want to look at it. Even if you can, even if you point to the implementation of the cache from Image Shop to reuse their cache, and then configure it to not use a cache, but to redo it before Image Shop itself, that would be interesting. Yeah, and to maybe its own memory cache for file existence. Um, now I will not do that. I don't think it's necessary because usually testing if the file exists on the file system is fast enough. And I'm afraid that we'll add more issues than we are solving. It might be a, a sure, to, have checking, a, to have an option. Yeah, what do you say? Uh, sorry, checking for files on blob storage is no, but if it's slight, yeah. sure, but checking for file existence on the local file system, because checking for the local file existence of the cache itself. Of the cache, yes, I get you, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. then you don't need yeah. to. So you check that before you go to blob storage to check to see if it exists there. Yeah, if there is a cached item there, then don't check on the blob storage if it's cached. Yeah. The only thing that could happen is that it has been removed from the blob storage and we still have the cache. So we are serving stuff that we might not want to be served, but that's a cache busting issue that we, that's a separate issue I think that can be solved differently. We could have an option to say clear the cache and then we could clear the local cache because people will want that for any time you have a cache, people want to be able to bust the cache completely, like clear the cache. So if we have yeah. our own um, providers um, and we can expose this option. We could use a, um, a signal from like an I, an I signal R from the um, media controller yeah, as far as chain. Yes, and that's a different, that's a, a parallel concern. So that's good because it doesn't have to be done right away and there can be many kind of implementations if, if necessary. So yeah, that's why I will not try to do a memory cache of the files that are local I don't know, right now because I'm not sure it's necessary. Just look at the file. Yeah. The cache, I mean, the, the cached file, yeah. yeah. 
it's a long thing. An another issue with the memory cache is that it can grow indefinitely if you never set um, at least um, a time limit. When you add an entry, always set an absolute limit so that even if the item is never used, then it will be removed at some point. That's a trick for the memory cache. It doesn't require you to do that, and if you add an entry without any time limit, it will stay in memory forever. That, can, that could be, And then the cache might grow in, indefinitely. That's why you always set um, a limit on the memory cache, even if it's just, oh, one day, whatever happens in one day. Or not, actually, a, a sliding expression, so that if, not, if it's never hit, at least in one day it will be removed. That's a right. trick. Okay. For the yeah, for the file version, for the blob file version provider, um, at the moment I just I just put a default expiry of um, 120 minutes in. Um, but this is for for a file appending from the blob as well. Like version of, of cache busting. Yeah, reading the code, trying to understand what you're doing here. At file version. Okay, but it should be cached. It should be part of the cached local cached file. No. Um, as some metadata, you mean? Trying to understand because here you will read from. Sorry. The... So when is it? Yeah, called? here you read from. A... Sorry, say again. When is it called the add file version to path? Um, it gets called from the, sh the shell version provider. Um, if you're using an append version attribute on any of the image tag helpers. But if the image is from blob storage and is cached locally, why would you again go into blob storage? Well, if you pick locally, you don't need to. Um, but if you've... So it gets around that kind of problem of changing a file on blob storage and it not getting changed in the browser or on the local cache. Okay, so there, there should be some... Okay, I see. So you add some... Well, I think you do a local cache. Some time buffer? Front, okay. It can be far, they can be smarter. Yeah, maybe a good idea to add some, what's the name? Um, what's the name? A, a, a delay that you can still serve an asset from the local cache to be quick, but then if it's in this delay, you serve it, but then you can also check on the server if the file is up to date or not. And if it's not up to date, then you delete the local, the local item. You served it because it's, uh, what's the name? Daniel made it for the Orchard One cache. Um, graceful period. Yeah. So you will serve the file locally because you are still in the graceful period, but then you check on your web storage if it has changed. And if it has changed, then okay, let's remove the, the local entry, even if we, if we serve it, because the next one, we want it to be generated. That sounds... That's yeah, a great period, meaning it's like if you say one hour, you're like, okay, I generated an item and it will be valid for one hour, even if someone changed it on the server, but the next time someone asks for it, then I will know about it and yeah. All right, so yeah, I think I check for a new version. Yeah, okay. And maybe that's why also image shop always does a metadata check, even if the file is cached. 
Yeah, that's one of the reasons they have to do the file lookup is because they need to do the image, the metadata check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this metadata lookup needs to be time constrained, like do it only once and where. So if you change the media on the blob storage, then you, the next refresh will be done in an hour. Unless you bust the cache locally and then... It's the same issue with a CDN, because when you have a CDN, I mean, there is a time to refresh. So while the CDN hasn't refreshed the, the blob, then it will serve the old value. Yeah. So that's where it is, is useful to put the, the hash on the end of the file because that will just break the CDN because it, the, the CDN will say the query string has changed. But if you uh, it correctly. I see. Yeah, but again, how do you know? <laughs> because you haven't read the file. <sighs> yeah. But you can handle you can handle that with a graceful query. Okay. Okay, okay. About time. Um, so, do you have anything else to show? No, that's good. But thank that's you. good. Thanks a lot, and thank you for uh, your dedication on all these uh, uh, concerns and features that you're doing. Awesome work. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So more. What, what's your next step? Um, do you want to look at externalizing the cache to be a global media cache and not just image sharp cache so that we can also work with PDF files and everything, cache them if they come from Azure Blob Storage? Um, yeah, that's probably the biggest missing piece at the moment um, is to get this middleware a little bit sorted out. Um, but you know, as long as I know I'm on the right track here, and this is this is the design that you're, that you're looking for, then we're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also remember the the, the comment uh, I made about the CDN settings. We should have a CDN section, and then the diver, diverse CDN check and URLs because we need a URL for the media, a URL for the resource, um, a checkbox for the resource. And also, um, I thought about something, I don't know. So the, we serve, yes, there is the resource and there is also the, um, the theme static files, all the static files. So the, we need three, three different CDN settings, right? The media one, the resource one, and the, stat, and the static files. Even though sometimes a resource can be from a module a static file, it can also be, or should it be the same thing? I'm trying to think. No, the resource manager regenerate. Okay, the resource manager generates a URL, so it needs the CDN setting. The media generates a URL, so it needs the CDN setting. And then when we point to um, um, a module static file directly with the tilde slash module name slash uh, file name, then we we also need a CDN, but in this case, we need a helper. So we need a helper on what? How do we do that? Is it possible actually? Um, yeah, mostly when you point to a, a module, you point probably with one of the tag helpers. So tag helper will have an option to say append CDN or something like that, but Maybe. Or maybe it should be automatic. Or maybe it should be automatic. We should find a way to detect that it's from a module. Then we should be able to open the module CDN path. Might be another. It's an alternate issue. Maybe we need to track and not part of this thing. Okay. But that would make sense. Like when we have a theme and we want to point to a theme asset to be able to inject the CDN one, optionally. Or always if we have a CDN, maybe always, because if you have modules with static assets and you want a CDN for that, you want a CDN for everything, you don't want a CDN just for one file. So in this yeah. case, the idea would be a global setting that if it's set, 
then whenever we render the URL for a module's asset, we render the URL with the CDN prefix. That would be the way to do that. So the tag helper will work because we could intercept that and every URL will be every tilde slash URL will be also appended with the with the CDN one. That will work. Okay. Awesome. Um, questions? Did I miss anything on the chat? Does anyone have questions, comments? Um, so actually, I guess there is one more question about the, the cache, the file cache, whether it needs to be self-cleaning. Oh yeah, because Jasmine had concerns also with that. When you serve lot, when you serve lots of things, you will. It's like downloading all Azure Blob storage into your local file system. <laughs> and the question is, when is it clean? So if we have an op so if we manage our own caching layer, this feature can also provide options to clean it, to bust it completely, or we could also provide features to. Um, have a quota because if we know when we store an item in this specific cache then we can track the size of the file system with a file or in memory or whatever uh, or we can just say we can also have an option which is a background task that every day will just burst all the files that are more than five days on the file system something like that that's an option we could do. That might be easy to do. Um, automatic cache cleaning, but at least, at least, at the minimum, have a cache busting option that will that will do what you just did, like delete all the fold, all the folders inside the cache, because we know we want to clear it because it's too big, and or because we know we want to clear it because we want new data. Um, so two levels. So first level cache burst everything. Second level have a background task that could uh, ensure there is a quota that is checked every day. It's not like hard limit quota because we can't do it live. Might be hard to maintain, but at least that once a day it will check and remove all the older items. That would be good. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. And good and not that hard to implement. Um, no. Jasmin, what do you have to say about that? Uh, the only thing I see uh, about, with that is that the fact that if I have my images on the blood storage and, and I'm caching those images back on my mm -hmm. uh, own uh, website uh, storage, then um, I'm getting duplicates of, of those images uh, and it takes a lot more space than what it should but then in this okay what if we had an option that when when you're on blob storage yeah. when you're on blob storage um is it dean i will mute i will mute you dean in case you didn't oh it's me it's, it's me oh it's it just, sorry <laughs> i thought it was dean uh, so what if we had an option that when we serve from blob storage and we end we have a cdn then we don't need to cache the entries because the next request from the client will be to the CDN which is a cache so it won't ask again for us for the image so we don't need to cache it does it make sense to just mind in um, the way I was seeing this is um, normally I should have everything on my CDN because um, it's naturally cached but Azure blob storage is not a CDN no, no. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. if you are using a CDN, which is cheap, even on Azure, if you configure the Azure CDN and you use Azure Blob Storage, because you did both of them, we could check the a setting that says we could disable the cache for the media, okay? Because we will serve the stream live from memory, from Azure Blob Storage, resized, served to the client. The client is the Azure CDN, which will cache it. So we don't need to store the cache locally on the file system in this case. Make sense? So we can disable the cache in this case. So it's so yes, that I think that will work, right? You just disable the cache because also it's a different 
feature for us that might be enabled by default even if we have the Azure CDN and the Azure Blob Storage, but you could say, no, I want to disable or yeah, disable the feature or just do a setting to say, don't cache. And, and this way it's not caching locally. So you will never have storage issue. Yeah, I, I think that can work. Um, uh, I think I have a PR in for the, the case anyway which i'll probably yeah. bring into this yeah and, and and this way just you can even test with caching and you will see it's increasing your local disk and that's fine for development time but on prod when your azure cdn is uh, enabled then you just then disable the cache and then the azure cdn will be the cache so the first request will still be slow but then the second request will be on the azure cdn which will be the cached so it won't go to our server Make sense? Awesome. Okay, I think that will, but we still need to be able to clear the cache and to clean the cache in a simple way. Okay, awesome. Thanks everyone. Awesome discussions, awesome demo, um, Dean. Thanks everyone for joining. Welcome back Antoine. <laughs> um, and, and so uh, next meeting on uh, Thursday for the triage for whoever wants to join and next one next Tuesday. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.